Okay, get ready for this one because today we're diving into a question I know a lot of you have probably wondered about. Does chocolate actually have any impact on how our skin reacts to the sun? Well, we're about to find out. We're going to be taking a close look at a research study all about this very topic chocolate and sun protection. This is going to be fun. Buckle up, everybody. Okay, so to kick things off, can you give us a quick overview of the study we're looking at today? Absolutely. So the study we're diving into is a double-blind, randomized clinical trial, and it's titled Chocolate Flavanols and Skin Photoprotection, a parallel, double-blind, randomized clinical trial. Yeah, it's a bit of a mouthful, but basically the researchers were looking at whether eating a type of chocolate that's high in something called flavanols could actually protect your skin from the sun. Flavanols. That's yeah. a new one. Okay, break it down for us. What are flavanols? So flavanols are these naturally occurring compounds, and you find them in things like cocoa beans, but also some fruits and vegetables and teas. They're actually really interesting because they're known for their antioxidant properties. Okay, and antioxidants, just as a quick reminder for anyone who's maybe new to this, those are the good guys that help protect ourselves from damage, right? Exactly. And when it comes to our skin, which is constantly exposed to the elements and all those environmental stressors, well, having that extra antioxidant protection could be really beneficial. So researchers have been curious about whether these flavanols, particularly the ones in cocoa, could actually help shield our skin from the sun. That makes sense. But how do you even measure something like skin protection in a study? Right. Good question. Well, they use something called the minimal erythema dose, or MED for short. Catchy. It basically tells you how much UV radiation it takes to cause that just noticeable reddening of the skin, you know, the first sign of a sunburn. Ah, okay. So the lower your MED, the more sensitive your skin is to the sun. Got it. Exactly. So by tracking the participants' MED throughout the study, the researchers could see if there were any changes in how their skin reacted to UV radiation based on the type of chocolate they were eating. Fascinating. So we know this study involved high flavanol chocolate, but what exactly were these participants eating and for how long? So spill the beans. What did this chocolate experiment actually involve? Okay, so picture this. For 12 weeks straight, these dedicated volunteers all healthy women between the ages of 20 and 65 had to eat a set amount of chocolate every single day. Okay, that's commitment. Hold on, all women. Mm. Were there any specific reasons they chose to focus on women for this study? You know, they don't really delve into that in the study itself, but it's worth noting it could be for a number of reasons, maybe wanting to minimize variables or perhaps focusing on a demographic that tends to be more concerned about skin health. Interesting point. And were they all fair skin too, since we talked about MED and how fairer skin tends to be more sensitive? Yeah, they were all either skin type 1 or 2, so definitely on the fairer side, which, like you said, makes it easier to observe those subtle changes in skin reaction to the sun. Got it. Get back to the chocolate. 30 grams a day, was that like a whole bar? 30 grams is roughly about the size of, like, one of those smaller ch chocolate bars, yeah. Oh. And they were randomly assigned to either the high flavanol group or the low flavanol group. Ah, so it was like a chocolate surprise every day you get what you get. Mm. Did they at least get to choose milk chocolate or dark chocolate? They don't specify that in the study, so who knows? Maybe it was a mix. But here's an important detail. They had a three-week washout period where they couldn't eat any chocolate other than what the researchers gave them. Wait, so a whole three weeks of no chocolate at all, except for their designated study snacks. That's some serious willpower right there. But I guess it makes sense. You don't want people sneaking in extra chocolate and messing up the results. So all this to say, they really wanted to make sure any changes they saw in the participants' skin were directly related to those specific types of chocolate they were eating, right? Exactly. But keep in mind, while their main focus was definitely on seeing how this high flavanol chocolate affected the participants' MED, that sunburn threshold, they also looked at some other interesting aspects of skin health, like elasticity and hydration. Oh, smart. Because uh. it's not just about whether you burn, right? It's about how healthy your skin looks overall. Yeah. So did they find anything groundbreaking? Well, the results were a little unexpected. After a whole 12 weeks of diligently eating their chocolate, the high flavanol chocolate didn't actually change the participants' MED all that much compared to the low flavanol group. Also, no magic sun protection superpowers from the chocolate then. I was kind of hoping for a more dramatic result. Me too. But here's where it gets interesting. Remember that three-week washout period I mentioned where they had to cut out all chocolate? Well, after that break, something fascinating happened. The researchers found that the group who had been eating the high flavanol chocolate actually saw their MED decrease. 
meaning their skin became less sensitive to the sun. Hold on, so even though there wasn't a big change during the 12 weeks, the high flavanol group actually ended up more protected from the sun. I am intrigued. Tell me more. That is wild. So even though it didn't seem like the high flavanol chocolate was doing much during those 12 weeks, it's like it was quietly building up some kind of protective effect behind the scenes. It really is interesting, isn't it? And, you know, it actually makes me think about how a lot of things related to health and diet, it's not always about those instant overnight results, you know? Totally. It's like you're not going to see six-pack abs after one salad, right? <laughs> Sometimes those real lasting changes take time and consistency. Exactly. So this finding really hints that there might be some really interesting long-term benefits to eating high flavanol chocolate when it comes to skin health. Benefits that we might not necessarily see right away. I like the sound of that. Long-term benefits, especially when it comes to chocolate. But, um, I do have to ask, why do you think we didn't see a more noticeable change in the participants' MED during those initial 12 weeks? Like, why wasn't it more obvious right away? Yeah, it's a good question. Honestly, there could be a few different things at play. One thing to always keep in mind with studies like this is just how incredibly complex and diverse human biology is. Right. We're all special snowflakes. Exactly. And our skin is no exception. Everyone's skin is different. And how our bodies respond to things like what we eat, sun exposure, all of that, it can vary so much from person to person. Right, right. Genetics, lifestyle, all those factors come into play. Absolutely. So that inherent variability, that uniqueness we all have, it can actually make it really tricky to pinpoint the exact effects of one specific thing, like just the flavanols in this case. Like trying to find a needle in a haystack. Yeah. Right? There are so many other factors that could be influencing the results. It's a great analogy. And speaking of factors that might have played a role here, there's one more interesting detail from the study that I wanted to bring up. Lay it on me. Okay, so remember how we talked about those flavanols being the potential protective heroes in chocolate? Well, it turns out that both types of chocolate used in the study, the high flavanol and the low flavanol, both of them actually contained another compound called theobromine. Theobromine. Okay, I'm going to need you to break that one down for me. What is it and why is it important here? So theobromine is another naturally occurring compound that you find in cocoa beans. It's interesting stuff, actually, because it acts as a stimulant, kind of like caffeine, but with milder effects. Oh, so maybe that's why chocolate can give you a little energy boost. It's possible. But here's the thing. Theobromine is also thought to potentially impact blood flow. Okay, I'm starting to see where this is going. So are you saying the theobromine in the chocolate could have messed with the results somehow? It's definitely something to consider. You see, if theobromine was influencing blood circulation in the skin for both groups, it might have made it harder for the researchers to isolate the specific effects of just the flavanols on that MED measurement. Ah, okay, I see. It's like if you're trying to listen for a quiet sound, but there's all this other noise in the background making it hard to hear clearly. Exactly. So to really tease apart those individual effects, you know, to see what the flavanols are doing versus the theobromine, future studies might want to look at using a low flavanol chocolate that has little or no theobromine in it. That makes a lot of sense. Control for all those extra variables as much as possible. Hmm. All right. So let's bring this all home. For those listening who are maybe craving a chocolate bar right now and hoping for some sun protection benefits, what's the big takeaway here? The big takeaway here is I think that what we eat really can have such a profound impact on our skin health, even in ways that we're still just beginning to understand. It's fascinating, isn't it? This whole hidden world of how our diet and our skin are interconnected. Totally. And this study, it gives us this really exciting glimpse into the potential, especially when it comes to those flavanols, for maybe actually boosting our skin's natural defenses against the sun. It's like giving your skin a little extra love from the inside out. Mm -hmm. I love that. But, and I know you already know what I'm going to say. Please do tell. As promising as these findings are, this is not a free pass to ditch the sunscreen and just eat chocolate all day long. Right. Right. Of course not. Sun protection is still absolutely crucial. Sunscreen, hats, sunglasses, seeking shade when you can, all of that's still essential for keeping your skin healthy and safe. Couldn't agree more. It's all about those layers of protection, right? Exactly. Although I think it's safe to say that maybe, just maybe, we can start thinking of high flavanol chocolate as a delicious way to complement our usual sun protection routine, not replace it. I'm all for that. A little treat with potential added benefits. And, you know, 
this whole discussion just really opens up so many other questions too. I mean, if flavanols and chocolate can potentially influence skin elasticity, what about all those other compounds found in different foods? There's a whole universe of possibilities out there when it comes to the connection between our diet and skin health. We've only just scratched the surface. That's the beauty of science. Mm -hmm. Always more to learn, always more to explore. But for now, I think this calls for a celebratory piece of dark chocolate, purely in the name of science, of course. All cheers to that. It's been a pleasure joining you for this fascinating deep dive. Always a treat to chat with you. Likewise. And to all our listeners out there, thank you, as always, for joining us on this journey of discovery. Until next time, keep those brains curious and those taste buds adventurous. <laughs>